This video is all about OBS, uh, Classic versus OBS Studio, and in particular for those people who have a choice, namely those people on Windows. And you'll notice on the OBS Studio, you can use that with Windows, Mac, or Linux. So the main thing that I want to start with is this statement here, which is open broadcast software is free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. I'm gonna make two examples. One of them is a simple Google search box. There's nothing in it, it's a white screen. It is completely contentless until we start to type something. In a similar way, you'll notice that my desktop is completely black, there's nothing on it. OBS is exactly the same. We have a canvas to bring to life. So let's get started. On the left hand side, we have got OBS Classic, where I've opened up a new scene and the sources on this scene are completely empty. And I'm going to do something here and then I'm going to do it over on OBS 013.4 Windows, which is OBS Studio. And I'll show you the difference between the two. What you'll also notice going back is that looking at OBS, you'll notice that Classic was last updated November the 24th, 2015, where March 21st, 2016, OBS Studio is the work in progress. This is free and open source. We need to look at one simplistic thing. That is adding, and you'll notice that with this blank canvas, if I started to preview the stream, you'll see it's black. Both are black. Imagine yourself in a cinema with the show about to start. The only thing you can probably see are the exit signs. OBS works like that. You can curate a stream magnificently and limit less to your own imagination. I'm going to stop that. What you'll notice again is add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different components on OBS Classic. Stop there. Go over to... OBS Studio, right click, add, and you'll notice there are nine. One, two, three, to seven. The extra two are the audio input capture and the audio output capture. Those are the differences, and I'm going to do like for like as I go through. Add an image. I'm going to add an image from my desktop. The one I'm going to look at is a tree and it's a tree 1600. You'll notice there's two different images. One of them is 4000 by 3000, which is a big image. Another one is a smaller 1600. I'm going to start with the A tree, big image, and I'll show you what happens. Open, I'm going to leave everything here and click OK. Now you'll notice with OBS Classic, nothing is in the preview area until we hit preview. Then you'll notice I've got something that looks blue, maybe a blue sky, but I can't see what it is because the image is huge. I'm actually set up for a 1280 by 720 area and this image is too big. So what we need to do is edit the scene and you'll notice that there are a set of little red squares and red lines around the outside. Now what I can do is drag that down and keep dragging it down until I can frame the photo on the canvas. Now, my tip here, of course, is to insert an image that is the same size as your preview canvas. In other words, if this had been 1280. So there is our image. What we can do after that image is pop it to the top left and it will auto jump down and to the bottom right. But you'll notice because it's a four by three image, there is a black area at the right. We, we can do whatever we wish to with that. So what I'm going to do is uncheck and you'll notice that there is a red rectangle, but there's no image because we've chosen to dial it off. So for that precise moment, I'm going to leave it and go over to OBS Studio to see how that looks. I'm going to add an image and I'm going to add an image and this time it's asking me slightly differently for a browse. And I'll come up for my uh, desktop, wherever it's gone. Here it is. And the same image. Click OK. And you'll notice the image does preview already. But when we hit OK, once again, it's very big. What you'll, you'll notice here is I don't have to click a preview the stream. 
is already done and highlighted in red. So what we can do is we can drag it around and what, what you'll notice here is that I've got a slight sizing. So anywhere that's on black is my broadcast or recording area. Anything that I bring over to the left look, I've now taken the image off of screen. So what I'm going to do in the same way is drag it all the way down, drag it all the way down, keep dragging it until it goes in to making it smaller. And there is the image. It pops up to be top left snap and snaps to bottom right. Once again, this time, notice on the left hand side I've got a checkbox, on the right hand side I've got an eyeball. So in other words, if I hover over that and click once, it disappears. It takes it away from the broadcast screen and then turns it back on again. So what we can do here is compare the two with an image.